this slide is, this slide is called intersection of subspaces, lemma again, and that's the content of the question 32 from the yellow book. Look what it says. <clears throat> it's another lemma, and I give, you name to, I give name to this lemma because I'm going to reference this lemma later. I will call it the intersection of subspaces lemma, or tutorial question 32. Again, there will be two parts. Uh, I, use, I use Greek letters for naming the parts because one, two, three, indexing one, two, three, I just reserve, reserve them today for criteria from the subspace theorem. We're going to use this theorem very often today. So look what the part alpha says. It says if you have two subspaces in a vector space, if you have two subspaces in a vector space, if you're given something like this, then if you build intersection of these two subspaces as sets, if you take the common part in these two, this will be a subspace again. And it's another powerful, powerful way to build new subspaces. Take two existing ones, intersect them, it's a new subspace. Many examples in the yellow book fall into this way of constructing the subspaces. I'll prove it to you. I'll give you some examples. But, but beta, actually, it's the, it's the induction version of this first alpha, uh, I mean, uh, of the part alpha. It's the version where you look not at two subspaces, but when you look at many subspaces. If you have many subspaces, W1, W2, W3, and many others, not necessarily even finitely many, you can have even infinitely many, and all of them individually are subspaces, then if you take this common part, this huge intersection between them, that will be a subspace again. In fact, part beta, it's the part of the question 33, part A in tutorial book. Again, I will just, because uh, the, uh, conceptually, the argument behind both parts is identical. It's just the second one is a bit longer because it involves some mathematical induction or some other principles. Uh, that's why I'll give you the, I just want to show you the idea behind the proof, so I'll prove only part alpha. If you have enough stamina and you like challenges, you can try to find the argument, uh, argument for part beta. Or you can just discuss it with your tutor, because it's a part of the tutorial book. So here's my proof of part alpha. And again, we're gonna argue by subspace theorem. Again, we're gonna check three criteria of a subspace theorem. Here's my check. Criterion number one. First, I make the observation because W1 and W2 individually subspaces, because they are individually subspaces, for them individually subspace theorem criteria satisfied. In particular, zero vector is the element of both of them Zero vector is a member of each of them. And that means that the zero vector belongs to the, to the intersection because the intersection is the elements which belong to both W1 and W2. And that is my W. The first criterion is checked. Second criterion, it's the closedness under addition. So I start with two vectors from my W which we know, intersection of W1 and W2. From here, I conclude that X and Y, they belong both to W1 and W2. Here it is. X and Y belongs to W1, and X and Y belongs to W2. This is just the interpretation of, of the intersection of sets. Nothing else at this stage. Now, W1 and W2, individually, they are subspaces. For them, criteria of subspace theorem are satisfied, meaning that if I add them, the sum will be in W1, meaning if I add them, the sum will be in W2. This is because W1 and W2 subspaces individually. And now, when, when we have a vector which belongs to both W1 and W2, 
it means that the, this, the same vector belongs to the intersection of W1 and W2, which is my W. Second criterion is checked. Again, you see, if, well, you, you, you can say right now that every individual step I presented some sort of almost a triviality, but a b ability to make this presentation with each step carefully referenced to some assumption or known result, that's the skill. And surprise, surprise, some of you will have difficulties with this, with this, with the, with the building that skill. So don't put it off for long. Practice as early as possible. Well, the third criterion is my uh, the W being closed under scaling. So I start with I start with two objects, my scalar and my vector x, which is a member of W, and that's why it belongs to the intersection. Again, first I interpret what it means being in intersection. That's exactly what it means. It means x belongs to W1 and W2 individually. Now, if I scale x, that will be the element of W1, because W1 is a subspace. If I scale x again, that will be the element of W2, because W2 by itself is a subspace. See, my step is carefully referenced to the assumption that W1 and W2 are subspaces. And then we have a vector which belongs both to W1 and W2. From here, we conclude that such a vector must be in the intersection, which we call W. And that's the third criterion, which is now, which is, which has been checked as well. And that's the finish of the path alpha of this intersection of subspaces lemma.